Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to the video. So we're just going to go over the entry requirements for Japan. So quick disclaimer, just make sure you do your own research and there may be different requirements depending on what country you come from. But these are the requirements that I needed to fulfill to be able to successfully travel to Japan. So let's get right into the video. So first off, I just recommend that you go to your government's website and just read through any travel advice for Japan. I'll put a link to these in the description. Of course, you can Google it yourself if you like, but I'll just have the option there for you. Also, when you're actually going to Japan, I recommend that you get the phone number of the embassy of whatever country that you come from in Japan just in case like it's just so you can call somebody or you know somewhere to go if you need help with something so you should sign up for the visit japan web service sign in you fill in all the information that it asks you for you'll need the hotel address and the phone number for the very first hotel that you're going to and you just put that in you fill everything out You'll have to fill out like a customs form, just saying you're not doing anything bad. Pretty much all you gotta do. And then you get a QR code and you just scan it at uh, the airport in Japan. There's really not a lot to it actually, it's quite simple. Some countries require you to get a visa, so again, do your own research, make sure your country doesn't require that. If you're coming from Canada or America, you can pretty much just show up. That was at least my experience. And you actually don't even need to do the Visit Japan web thing anymore, but It'll just save you a lot of time so that you don't have to fill out a physical card when you get there. It'll just make the process a lot faster. That's pretty much all there is to it. If you're coming from Canada or America, you just do the Japan entry web thing. Pretty much everybody should, but I'm Canadian, so I only really know about the Canadian aspect. And then the rules for Canadians and Americans are quite similar. So just, again, like do your own research and look into it, but pretty much you don't really need to do anything if you're coming from Canada or America because once you land there, it's on the plane they're going to give you a card that you can fill out and then once you land you can just go up to a terminal you can turn on the English setting or whatever you can answer the questions basically just saying you're not doing anything bad and then you go through and you're done, that's it. You get a stamp on your passport saying that you can be there for 90 days. Just go on the Japanese government website and review the travel requirements for your country. Go on your country government website, just read through anything that they suggest. Get the number of the embassy of your country in Japan just so you have somewhere to go if you get lost or you need help with something. Make sure you have travel insurance. Also something to note that when you're going to Japan, you must have a return ticket that won't let you stay. Also, you have to have your passport on you at all times. It's a law. If someone asks you for your passport and you don't have it, you may be kicked out. I'm not a lawyer. Make sure you do your own research. This is just things that I saw and I heard of and I researched in my own time. I'm just conveying it. I'll have another video that goes more in depth about what to do when you're actually in Japan. So I'll have a end card in this video about the week after this video comes out. So hopefully you watch it and find it helpful. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. I'd like to thank you for watching. Hope you have a good day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.